What's going on everybody? Anthony here with Duke City Aquariums and today is finally the day. Today is the day that we add the fish to the 90 gallon aquarium. Now this is episode number four of my DIY aquarium build series. Um, if you haven't seen episodes one through three, go ahead and check those out. I'll leave them up here um, so you can go check them out. You can watch me build the stand, the canopy and the aquarium. And um, that would be really cool for you guys to take this journey with us and um, and start from scratch. So that'll be cool. But anyway, as for today, I'm gonna go ahead and go over all the equipment first that I'm gonna be putting in here. I got the substrate, filter, um, decorations, heater, all that good stuff. And then I'm also gonna add the fish. Now this is the most exciting part, at least for me. I don't know if it's exciting for you, but I'm really excited for it. The fish is gonna be here tomorrow. I ordered it today. Got overnight shipping and a beer tomorrow and then um, but as for today I really want everything completely set up ready to go so that I don't have to worry about anything tomorrow I can just add the fish so let's go ahead and get started first we're gonna go over really quickly all the equipment just just so that we can get that out of the way then we'll set up the tank and then I'll see you back tomorrow to add the fish so let's go Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and go over really quick just the equipment that I'm gonna use in this build. Okay, so first stop, let's go ahead and talk about filtration really quick. For this 90 gallon, I decided to go with two. I decided to go with a hang on back and a sponge filter. And so the ones that I'm gonna use, I have this guy right here. This is a sponge filter. I just got it off Aquarium Co-op, but I guess kind of like a fun fact, this is the same sponge filter that I used in my previous video talking about um, how to add an air stone to your sponge filter. I did a whole video on that in tutorial and this is actually the one that I use. It's still brand new, um, so I haven't been able to use this yet. So what I'm gonna be doing, and this is with all the filtration I'm gonna use on this new tank, is I'm actually going to be putting this in um, one of my other aquariums and taking that sponge filter, which is the exact same one, and putting it in the new one just so it's pre-cycled media it has all the beneficial bacteria ready to go so i'm going to be using one of these large sponge filters get that out of the way and then also i'm going to be using another one of these marine land 350 penguin bio wheels this is one of my favorite hang on back filters um i really like these a lot the value you get for 30 bucks is really good so with this i'm going to be using um, an intake filter sponge, also from Aquarium Co-op, and uh, sorry, <laughs> and these uh, coarse sponge pads as well that I also got from Aquarium Co-op. Now um, I'm not going to be using these these specific ones for this build because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking all all. Um, Recycled media from other aquariums and adding them there. So I'll be putting this brand new intake sponge filter on one of my other tanks and then taking that one off, putting it here. Just like I said before, for all the beneficial bacteria and same with the coarse sponge pad. All right, moving on. Um, to power the sponge filter, I got this um, Tetra Whisper Air Pump 100. For up to 100 gallons, it says. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, basic air pump there. I also got this guy and I'm actually really excited for this. This is really cool I actually might do a full review on it, but what it is is it's a um, four inch air disc now This thing's massive it's huge it, it, I know it doesn't look that big on camera, but it's pretty big and so um, we already tested it out in here I, I ran it for a few hours and it's it's pretty awesome. It sends out a ton of bubbles um, so I'm really excited to use this and this will of course also be powered by the Tetra Whisper air pump All right moving on. Let's go ahead real quick Talk about the heater. I picked up the 300 watt heater from a company or Lushy I, I actually use these heaters in almost all my aquariums. I really like them I don't have any complaints with them and 300 watts should be sufficient for the 90 gallon Okay, um all right, and then we also have substrate. This, I picked this up from PetSmart. It's top fin. It's a white, it says it's aquarium gravel, and um, but it's super, super fine. It's very, very, very small. I would call it a sand. It's like a, it's a white sand. And um, this is a 25 pound bag. I picked up three of these. So 
Um, in total, I picked up 75 pounds of substrate for the 90. Um, I hope that's going to be enough. Um, I think it should, but we'll see. And last but definitely not least and this is the reason why this video has been delayed so long is because i was waiting for this package yeah <laughs> that is a box from universalrocks.com and i ordered a couple things from that company um i you know a bunch of youtubers talk about them and uh, i've seen a lot of product reviews on universal rocks um, so I decided to get a few things for this tank it did take a little bit longer to get here but let's go ahead and open it up to see what we got okay so I just popped the box open um, I will say the packaging wasn't amazing stuff was kind of bouncing around in there but um, nothing was damaged or anything like that but so the first thing I got was this this is a 23 inch tree stump um, now, for everybody who doesn't know Universal Rocks, they do artificial stuff, so this isn't real. Um, but it does float, or it doesn't float, it sinks, and it'll stay towards the bottom. And I'm going to put this in one of the corners to hide, like, the heater and the sponge filter and things like that. Um, you'll see the back here. I turn around. It's hollow. It's hollow. So it can actually go right up against the glass. But this thing is heavy. This thing is very, very, very heavy. I'm not worried about this moving around in there or floating or anything like that so this is pretty awesome I'm actually really impressed with it um, yeah pretty good all right let's set that down for a sec and I also picked up these Ooh. these rocks these river stones I picked up a set of six of these and um, to me they look very real when if these are on the bottom of an aquarium they look like giant rocks um, but like before the like the tree stump they are they're hollow on on the uh on the inside so that's cool um so they're not nearly as heavy as real rocks but they're very very heavy um considering they're hollow so these i, I ordered these because this is the only decoration that's going to go in the aquarium i wanted it a very minimalistic uh very minimalistic aquarium and you'll see why when i do add the fish but that seems to wrap it up for all of the equipment let's go ahead and put this system together first thing i'm going to do take the um the substrate outside rinse it off i'm actually going to rinse off these i don't know if i'm if i'm supposed to or not but it, it, they got a little bit dusty in the box so i'm gonna go rinse those off too but as soon as i'm done rinsing off all of the substrate we'll come on back here and start putting everything in so let's go Alrighty guys, so the sand is all in. Um, that was 75 pounds, I did get three bags. Um, I kind of wish I got one more bag, but I think it's gonna be okay for now. Next, over here on this side, you can see is I slightly piled it up towards that back corner. So now I'm gonna go ahead and place my rocks here and uh, see if I can figure out a good layout for them so that it looks nice, all right? <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, guys. So there's the there's a little rock pile there. I really like the way the escape turned out. Um, you can't really tell right now um, from back here, but don't worry. I'll get close-ups of everything um, towards the end of the video. Um, but as for right now, so sand and rocks are in. That's it. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is start adding the equipment. I'm going to add. Let's see. So in that back corner right there, that's where I'm going to add the heater and the sponge filter, and then I'm going to put the big tree stump right in that back corner to kind of hide some of that stuff. Um, next thing, I'm also going to be um, adding and installing the uh, the hang on back filter and, um, and adding all that stuff. So um, let's go ahead and do that now. So hang tight.
Alrighty guys, so here is the finished scape in total. I really like the way it turned out, um, the, especially the sand. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the sand. Um, it's a top fin brand, so it's, um, it's not anything high quality. I got it at PetSmart. It was 20 bucks for a 25 pound bag. And when it comes to sand substrates, that's actually pretty cheap. Um, so I just decided to go for it and I'm really glad I did. Um, I think it's going to work out really well in this aquarium. I think it looks great against the black background and stuff. Um, also the stuff from Universal Rocks. I actually really like those as well. Um, the big tree branch is super cool, cool looking. It's, it's enormous. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to tell uh, in the video, but it's, it's absolutely huge. And, um, and it is able to hide the heater and the sponge filter as well. So that's also really nice. And the rocks, of course, they look, to me, they look like real rocks until you actually pick them up and handle them. But um, I really like the way they look. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the, the air disc in the corner there, I really like that as well. Um, like I said earlier, I think I might be doing a review on that. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit on the pricey side. It was like $25, but considering the quality and the, the actual air that it puts out, um, I really, really like it, and I think it's going to work out really well. Um, uh, as for everything else, everything else is look, looking great, working great, everything's good. So now, uh, it's pretty late at night right now, it's about 9.30, so my fish is going to arrive first thing in the morning. So, um, first thing in the morning, we're going to go ahead and unbox, add the fish, and at that time, you'll notice that I did add all of the new uh, filters and filter media and stuff. So I am going to be replacing those tomorrow when the fish gets in with um, the, the pre-cycled filter media for my other aquariums. I didn't want to throw it in there now without a fish in there because I didn't want any of the beneficial bacteria to die overnight um, without any ammonia source. So we're just going to do that right in the morning and, um, and then we will, and then we'll kind of go over everything else and do final thoughts and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, it's the next day, guys. Good morning. Uh, fish arrived uh, right at about 10.30 a.m. I, uh, I just finished putting in all of the uh, existing filter media in. I didn't, I didn't go ahead and film that part just because that would have just been really boring and this video is already way too long as it is. So, um, fish is floating right now. So, I'm gonna, he's ready to go. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pop him in the bowl and drop him in the aquarium. So, let's go ahead and Get a little bit of footage of that, okay? Here we go. Alrighty guys, I have one shot at this, so I hope I don't mess it up. Here we go. So there it was, that's the big reveal. The big mystery fish is the Super Red Dragon Flower Horn. Now this is a fish that I've wanted for a very long time. And uh, as a matter of fact, I actually decided that I wanted to get this fish before I started building the tank. So I was able to build the entire system around this fish. Um, you'll notice I said earlier that um, I wanted to keep this, this tank very minimal in design. 
Um, that's because the flower horn is going to get really big. It needs a lot of, um, of open swimming area. Plus, they're kind of clumsy, so they can accidentally bump into things. And so it's kind of best to have a minimalistic design when it comes to these fish. Um, you'll notice I actually do have the lights turned off right now. And that's because um, uh, he was super stressed out from the move. I did get um, all of the footage you just saw. I did manage to get that before. Um, and then after that, I went ahead and turned off the lights and I'm right now, I'm just kind of, I'm just letting him chill out. Um, just to, cause I know it was super stressful for him. It was stressful for me. So, I mean, I can only imagine, uh, how stressful that was for him. So he's just kind of chilling. Um, not, not moving too much. You can kind of see him, kind of see him right here. Um, but, uh, but anyway, um, leave a comment down below and let me know uh, what you think we should name him. Uh, I have a couple in mind, but uh, I want to hear some suggestions um let's see so all of the equipment that i did talk about will be linked in the description down below so you can go check that out if you want to and um what well, one last quick thing i do uh, ask if you haven't seen again i know i already said it but if again if you haven't seen the first three episodes please go watch those and then um just so you can kind of see where we came from how far we came from episode one to where we are now excuse me so um, it was just an amazing journey for me. I had a ton of fun. I learned a lot of things and, um, just remember like if I can do something like this, you can do it too, because anybody who knows me will tell you that I'm not, I can't really, I'm not very good at building things. I'm not a huge DIY guy. So, um, just remember if I can do it, you can do it. If you have something that you want to get done and you don't think you can, you can just do it. Don't give up. Um, just keep moving on and you and you'll get through it so anyway that will wrap it up for me today guys I thank you so much for watching my name is Anthony with Duke City Aquariums and we will catch you in the next one